Hi everyone and welcome to week 11 of Succession Law, our final week of substantive study in this subject. Now as someone who practices extensively in this area, um, I think that we've left the best topic until last because this week we are going to be looking at family provision applications. In previous weeks, we've looked at challenging a will on grounds of validity um, and the process of obtaining um, a grant of probate in solemn form. But this week, we'll be exploring what happens when a beneficiary of the will or an eligible applicant has no concerns about the validity of the will, but rather um, believe that they should have received further provision or more um, from the estate of the deceased person. Family provision applications um, are arguably the most common type of claim brought against an estate. This week we're going to be focusing on who can bring a claim for further provision and what must be demonstrated in order for an applicant to succeed with their claim. What's essential to understand um, are the classes of eligible applicant and in this regard we'll be looking in detail um, at the definition of spouse and children and also dependents. Um, and the two-stage test as set out in the case of Singer and Berghaus that the applicant is required to meet. We're going to look at disentitling conduct um, and also the impact that a claim for further provision has on the estate administration process more generally. Family provision applications turn largely on the facts um, and we're going to look at what the court takes into consideration when determining the quantum of a claim. Now the absolute best way to ensure that you have an in-depth understanding of family provision applications um, is to read some recent cases where further provision has been sought, um, whether the applicant is successful or they're not successful. The beauty of family provision applications is that they always follow the same formula. Um, and in your readings, you'll also see um, that I've listed practice direction eight of 2001 as a recommended reading. Now I encourage you to uh, spend some time reviewing this practice direction um, as it does provide the practical steps that a legal personal representative um, and an applicant must take if a claim is brought and, can, and proceedings are commenced. Um, I hope you enjoy this week's material um, and have the opportunity to read and um, consider some cases of your own. Cheers.